thanks for taking the time to uh, speak with me today. Um, sure. I, I guess I'll, I'll first ask you, Ron, uh, how does one get involved in producing sound for a film? Because it's, you know, a pretty fascinating job that you do. Oh, my God. I, I could go on for 30 minutes about that. <laughs> um, well, I got a degree in film in college. And uh, basically, when I graduated, needed to get a job. And I was living in Dallas, Texas. And uh, the local PBS station there was starting a nightly news show. They, they were hiring a camera person and a sound person. My friend had gone in and, you know, gotten the job as the camera person. And so the sound job was the one that was available. I went and applied for it. And I'd done a little bit of sound for student films. And uh, they hired me. And I just sort of learned by, by doing a lot of ways. And I worked there for about a year and a half and, you know, other things happened. I moved to California out in 1979 and and had done a done sound for a couple of movies back in Texas and in Louisiana um, but didn't know anyone when I moved to Los Angeles and just started making phone calls and I'd make 20 calls a day and um, I didn't have the, the, you know, the uncle that owned the film studio. I just had to like <laughs> scratch and try to find a job and then it took me about two years to, to to finally make you know get enough jobs and have enough people who would hire me that I knew I could pay the rent. Okay. Um, and then I just slowly worked up from there. All right, great. Um, it was all just word of mouth and making phone calls and you know networking a lot. You know. Right. Right. Um, so at, at this year's uh, uh, DCIFF, um, you know you'll be leading a master class for sound production. Um, can you? F- uh, first, talk about how you got on board with the festival, and then uh, can you tease, you know, a bit what attendees can expect uh, from the class? Yeah, um, we just submitted my film, uh, our film, Finding Neighbors, to the festival, and we were accepted. And then in the conversations with the festival programmers and the festival director, um, they asked if I would be you know, interested in doing a master class. And I've done a few of them in the past, and they're usually pretty fun. And so I said, sure. Um, I like working with people and I like teaching and so some of it's going to be you know I think it's an hour hour and a half so we can't get too too in depth with a lot of you know particular things but some of it's going to be the history of sound in movies um, how it evolved to where it is today um, a little bit of talking about perspective in sound like um, things you know, further away visually, want me. You know, you want them to sound further away, and how that can also sometimes get you in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, and then different ways of sound production: multi-track versus mono recording. You know, like ENG style versus what we do in on movies. And then I want to kind of open it up to. I mean, I'm thinking and hoping that the the attendees, you know, have had experiences, you know, trying to record sound and recording sound. And, you know, what kind of problems they've had. And, you know, we'll just talk about, you know, solutions and different ways of doing things. And then I, you know, open it up for a Q&A at the end. And that, for me, is always the most fun. Cause you never know what people are going to bring up or what experiences they, they've had. And um, it kind of turns into a free for all, but it's always, it's always <laughs> more fun. Okay. All right. Outstanding. Uh, so so speaking of film, uh, sound production, excuse me. Uh, you've had, you know, you've had such a, a expansive body of work in terms of the films that you've done in your career. You know, many of which have been Spielberg films. Um, right. What would you say it is about, you know, working with Spielberg, or, or, or why do you think that that collaboration that you guys have had over so many films has been so successful? That's a good question. Um, I think over time, you know, what we, I tend to do, you know, there's different philosophies in terms of recording sound on the film set. But I try to be invisible, and I try to fold, you know, my process into the larger process of, of the, you know, the film making as a whole. What, and what that means is that I, I don't, you know, if there's little problems, I don't cry a wolf all the time. You know, I, if there's a big problem, I'll certainly make the director aware of it. But I try to just work, fold, again, fold what we're doing into... Uh, the big picture and not hold up the production and at the same time deliver a product that is, you know, usable, very good, commercially acceptable, whatever you want to call that. And then with 
Stephen, I think, you know, over the years, you know, having worked with him before, I kind of feel like I know what he what he's after, and he, you know, so he doesn't have to explain to me, you know, what he wants all the time, and and that happens a lot with directors where, you know, Janusz Kaminski, the the director of photography, with you know has done quite a few movies for Stephen as well, and you know after a while, it, it, you develop a second hand. Yeah, and it's like a big family, you know, and you know. You know, Uncle Larry may be grumpy, but he's, he is a good guy, you know, and I mean, you know how to get along with people. So when a director is able to put that kind of team together and it works for him, he, he or she will, you know, of course, would want to carry that group, you know, to, to the next film, the next film, the next film. Okay. So, you know, right. A lot of that, I think, is just sort of guessing what he wants, and, and, and um, I guess I've been pretty successful about that. Okay. But over time, I will say, you know, over time, it just seems like there's less time for communication. There's less time, you know, they, like you get to the film set at seven o'clock in the morning or whatever, and it's a stampede, and you don't like let up till 12, 13 hours later. But then there's not a lot of time for standing around and thinking about what you're going to do. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, so, uh, aside from, you know, the film that, that you'll uh, pre- uh, be presenting at this year's film festival, um, you also uh-huh. have uh, two upcoming projects, one being Chef and the other one, uh, McFarlane. Can, can you talk a bit about uh, those projects? Well, I, my involvement in those films uh, was, I just finished McFarlane right before Christmas. Okay. Working on McFarlane. Chef was right before that. Chef is uh, a movie by, directed by John Favreau, and um, he plays a guy who's like a... Um, you know, sort of a top chef in Los Angeles, and he gets into kind of a, a shouting match and a feud with a food critic, and the chef himself actually gets fired from this, you know, really high-end restaurant, mm-hmm. and then kind of reinvents himself with a food truck. Um, and I probably can't tell you more. <laughs> right, sure, sure, but, um, sure, of course. It was really fun because, uh, you know, on both those films, for me, especially Chef, Chef is a very, I wouldn't say it's low budget, but it's a small film, and I really enjoyed kind of getting back to working with a smaller crew and um, getting back to my roots in a way. You know, much like we did with Finding Neighbors, the film that I directed. Um, and then McFarland, I was so excited to work on McFarland because uh, it was directed by Nikki Caro, who did a movie called Whale Rider. I don't know if you ever, if you know Whale Rider. So yes, it was yes, a yes. Mm-hmm. New Zealand film, and I just thought that was one of the best films ever. I, I remember watching it, I saw it at Sundance, and just cried and it just that film really touched me and then so when I got a call that you know the possibility of working with Nikki it was like it was fantastic and it was such a positive experience and Nikki would like at the end of every week she'd go around and hug everybody and thank them for their work that week and it was like that was shocking to me because I haven't seen that in like ever I don't know if I've ever seen that you know there's <laughs> it's so personal and you know heartfelt um and in McFarland, Kevin Costner plays a high school coach who has a sort of altercation with a student at a high-end college prep school, and he kind of injures this kid, but he's not inadvertently. He doesn't mean to um, by getting into a scuffle. And he gets fired, and he gets blackballed, and the only high school that will hire him is this little, finally, after a year of looking for a job, is this little high school in McFarland, which is... It's a real town about 30 miles north of uh, Bakersfield in California. Mm. And uh, it's a Hispanic uh, community, and Kevin is hired on to be an assistant football coach, but he gets into an argument with the main football coach, so they just say, hey, dude, if you can just teach PE, three classes of PE, we won't fire you. But he notices these kids, they go and they pick in the fields in the San Joaquin Valley, They'll start working at like 4 o'clock in the morning, and then they'll run when it's time to go to school. They actually put down their, their stuff, and they'll run to school. And he clocks this kid. He realizes he sees him every day as he's driving to school to mm. teach, and he realizes this kid would be in the top five cross-country uh, track runners in the state mm. if he was on a team. So he talks the school board into starting a cross-country team, and it's a true story. They win 10 out of the next 13 state championships. Wow. Okay. Um, okay. And if it's it's really kind of a heartwarming story. And the cool thing about it is, Kevin's character and his family. It's one of those stories where they kind of get a lot out of it too. It's not just that he's you know the white guy that teaches Hispanic kids how to 
you know, excel, he gets so much out of it himself and decides to just stay there for the rest of his life. And so it was good. I, you know, it was great to work with Kevin and great to work with Nikki, and um, I really liked the values of the film. All right. Uh, terrific. Well, uh, just a moment ago, um, you know, we were talking about uh, the uh, working with uh, Spielberg and, and your your collaborations with them. Um, aside from you know those those films that you know those two films that we were uh, um, discussing, um, will we be working on any you know upcoming uh, Spielberg projects that you know are still in development or you know had, did you even though he's not necessarily directing the upcoming installment, um, do, are right. you uh, in, involved in any way with the upcoming uh, Jurassic film, Jurassic World? No, uh, the producers of that of that film are. I can't remember his name, but um, they have done a lot of the Bourne movies, the Bourne Supremacy and all those films, and um, it's a different group. Gotcha. And I typically, do, like, I'll work with uh, with Spielberg, and then if he directs the sequel, I'll do it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not going to be doing Jurassic World. Okay. Um, another sound mixture, Kirk Francis is going to do it. There's been a few projects in um, the last, well, since the last time I Spielberg's director was on Lincoln, right? And there's, there were there were a couple of things that were supposed to happen, and American Sniper, and then there was another thing, and and they kind of like all you know at the last minute fallen through or haven't happened, or they go back to rewrite the script. So um, I don't know what what they're up to. I haven't gotten a call. I don't have anything on my calendar for this year, um, and I typically will hear you know for sound. I'll typically hear a couple months or three months in advance, or sometimes more four months or so. Oh, okay. Um, and, uh, you know, I always, I've done 13 movies with Spielberg, but I, I every time I, I, I always just, just, I never assume that I'm going to be on the next one. You know, the movie business is very fickle and things happen and um, I just always try to do my best and, you know, treat each film as if it's the first one, you know, sure, and sure. go in there and do the best job I can and hopefully I get called back and up to this point I've been very lucky and I have okay all right well well Ron uh thank you uh so much uh for your time speaking with me today and uh you know um I, I look forward to uh, uh checking out the film at the festival and um you know good luck with you and all you know your uh, future projects that'd be great